Garden hoses can not only look a mess, they can be a real pain to use. So in this video, we're gonna change all that by installing a brand new hose reel, but we're gonna kick this one up a notch so that it looks and works better in your yard. And the best part is it's easy to do because you don't need to mess with concrete, no cutting wood, and you're gonna get a great finished result. The reel I'll be installing is made by the company Hoselink. They're based in Australia and this model is 82 feet long. This reel has been available for a number of years and what sets it apart is it has really good online reviews and you can actually order replacement parts for it if something should break down the road. I also like that the mounting point is actually made of aluminum. This is pretty unusual on any hose reel that you'll find. Additionally, in this kit, they give you a number of extras. They also include their own set of quick disconnects in the box. You get one for the end of the garden hose and the other one goes in the spigot on your house. Now these are pretty well made and they seem very solid, but if you don't want to use them, you could just unscrew them and then it has regular hose connections. You also get one heavy duty mounting bracket. Now you can order more than one of these in case you wanted to move your hose around. And you can mount it directly on a surface like your house or put it on a wooden post because they had that air conditioner in the way, I needed to put the reel a little bit higher than you would normally do it. The other benefit of using a post is it puts the hose away from your house a bit, and this should help so it doesn't get snagged up as much under a shrub or say on the edge of a border. I went to the store and bought a six foot post that was pressure treated. Now to put that in the ground, you can just use a shovel, but I'd highly recommend getting one of these post hole diggers because they make the job a lot easier. So once you decide on your location, you need to make sure there's nothing under the ground. So call DigSafe if you want, but in this area, I knew I didn't have anything at all. So I just started digging the hole and then I could place the post in the ground. Using a post hole digger, you can go down almost four feet. So if you get a six foot post, you just wanna make sure you've got at least two feet in the ground. Hoseling says you should mount the bottom of their bracket at about 34 inches. Now with this height out of the ground, I knew it had plenty of clearance, but my goal was I wanted to make sure that the reel could spin around and not hit that air conditioner. Next, you wanna get that post level and make sure that it won't move. And I couldn't find my clamps or any type of scrap wood, so I just grabbed these snow stakes along with some duct tape and a level to check it. Might not be the greatest looking method, but it worked just fine and the post was level. Now we wanna keep that post firmly in the ground and normally you'd think you'd use concrete, but you don't have to deal with the dust or the weight this time because we're gonna use this product called Post Fix. This is polyurethane foam in a bag. Now all you have to do is squeeze the bag and that seam in the middle breaks and now the two parts of the polyurethane mix together. You just roll the bag around a few times and some guys will run it on the side of a ladder or something like this, but you just need to mix it up and then you can go ahead and cut the bag open and you're gonna pour the contents into the hole. And if you're thinking that foam would never hold a post, you'd be completely wrong. This stuff has been made for a number of years and it works really well. And in just about three minutes, this stuff is already rock hard. I poured a little bit too much on one side of the hole, so I had that excess when I was done, but it's easy to deal with. You can just cut it with a knife and remove anything that might show up on the surface. Now, of course, you could go ahead and just use the pressure treated post the way it is, but a lot of the trim on my house is white and I wanted to dress this project up a bit. So I went ahead and bought this PVC sleeve and it just goes right over that post. Now I had a couple of extra inches on this post, but I decided I wanted to cut off the excess plastic because it's pretty easy to cut. But if you didn't feel like doing this part, you could totally leave that excess in place as it wouldn't cause you any problems with the post. And I'm definitely no carpenter, but the easiest way I found to do it was to cut down until that saw blade touched the top of the wood and then it just went in the opposite direction and trimmed off the excess. Now if you're worried about that rough edge, it doesn't matter at all because you can put that part pointed towards the ground, but when you're done, you're actually gonna put a cap on top so it's all covered up anyway and you get a really nice result. Now we're ready to install our bracket. Now you can really install it at any height you want. The directions say 34 inches to the ground, but for me, I went a little bit higher so that I could clear the air conditioner. They also include a template in the box and you could certainly go ahead and use it, but I'm a little bit old school. So I just took the bracket itself. I started by drilling one hole and then I put the screw into the corner of the bracket. Now the benefit to doing it this way is it's really impossible to make a mistake because I positioned the bracket in place, then I went ahead and drilled the second hole. Now this way there's no waiting to see how everything fits because I'm actually working directly with the bracket. Hoselink includes all this hardware in the box and it's made of stainless steel. I also recommend waiting until you get all four of them in before you completely tighten them down. The other clever thing with this bracket is they've given you a little bit of wiggle room. So if it's crooked just a bit, you can actually adjust it so your end result will be perfect even if you mess up a bit. Put that aluminum tube onto the bracket and now the reel is ready to use. Now when you use a post like this, you can rotate your reel 180 degrees. So in this side of my house, I'm gonna be able to do my whole side yard with my hose and reach all the way back out to my shed. 
and you won't have any more messy hoses because that reel is self-retracting. So you can pull that hose out all the way to 82 feet, you give it a slight tug, and then the spring will pull the hose back into the reel. And you'll notice inside the reel there's that guide, and that puts that hose perfectly onto the reel every time. So you're not going to get kinks, nothing's going to bind up, and it's going to make your hose last a lot longer. The hose and all the plastics are made of ultraviolet stabilized stuff, so it's not going to wear out in the sunlight. And additionally, the diameter of the hose is just under 5 eighths of an inch. And if you want any hose or reel to last forever, you need to bring it indoors if you've got a winter where you live. And this thing makes it really easy. You just use the built-in handles and it lifts right off the bracket. I've never shown you any other hose reels before because most of them are junk and they won't last. Hose Link is different. They've been selling these for a number of years and you can see the online reviews for yourself. These things work and they last. And they're not the cheapest of $1.99, but they do include all those quick disconnects. You get the sprayer and it is a complete kit ready to install. Hopefully this video gave you some ideas that you can use yourself. And if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already for more videos coming up.